So we're here to talk about cybernetics for the masses, which is to say how you and I and left anonym here can hack ourselves and hack our bodies, which is really exciting because, no? Oh, oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> anyway, um, please give left anonym a really warm welcome. I am really excited for this. Hi. <laughs> Okay, I guess I should start then. Um, hi, first of all, forgive me if I sound funny because I've never spoken on a microphone before. Also, I've never seen this many people in one place ever, so I might be a little bit nervous and I might even pass out. But anyway, <laughs> I'm just here to talk to you guys about stuff that I do for fun, which is not very complex and not very high tech, but not many people seem to be into it. So they asked me to do a talk, so I'm doing a talk. It's probably gonna be more of a jabber, but. First of all, I, my name's Lef. I work with mostly implants. Uh, they're mostly in the field of sensory expansion. That is, I work with adding more data onto the sensory data that you get from real life. It sounds incredibly complex. It's really not. Uh, the whole thing works on one basic principle. That is that your nerves are electric things and electric devices can set off nerves quite simply. I'll be explaining all of this later. I won't be giving proper technical instructions because I don't actually know the legality of anything like that. So, should, seriously, uh, doctors won't touch me in England. So, if anyone actually wants proper instructions, contact me via email. That will be coming up in a second. And I'll be happy to give you step by steps if you want them. And it's really not very difficult, but it hurts a lot, is the only thing. <laughs> Okay, so this is me. I'm not very big. I'm not very clever. All I do is play about with junk. I cut holes in myself. I put things in the holes. The holes are full of electricity, and that's how things work. It's, it's not complicated at all. That's my email address there if anyone wants to contact me. Uh, although I should point out, this is why it's in red, I'm not a doctor. I'm not any kind of doctor. I don't have anything to do with any medical device ever. Uh, please don't sue me. <laughs> it, that, that's it. I, this is up there. Mostly I work with haptic stuff, that is, devices that work on touch-based, except I'm not really sure if haptics is the right word for it anymore because it's more like electronic haptics or subdermal haptics or something, but it's, that's mostly correct. That's my crappy blog there if anyone wants to visit. It has some documentation and mostly whinging. Okay, so mostly they call me a biohacker. Uh, this is Experimentation on the lowest of low budgets. I, I have no budget, no money, no anything. So all I work with is stuff that you can get in a kitchen and that you can work with, you know, junk, basically. If it's under 50 euros, I've got it. Otherwise, no. So my goal is functional subdermal electronics. I don't care about LEDs under people's skin. I don't care about stuff that you have to wear. I, don't, I want proper implanted extensions to the human body. So far, this has been mostly successful with a lot of pain and a lot of side effects and things like that. Uh, my personal goal is sensory extension. That is, there's a lot of other goals in this field, but mostly they're just goals. I, as, as far as I can tell, I'm one of the only people who actually works with this stuff rather than uh, sitting there thinking, wouldn't it be great if it actually existed? So although it's just me, uh, this has a lot of potential for expansion. I'm basically the like the, the sort of start-off point. If other people joined in on this, it would be a lot better than it is. So as it says, I'm on the lowest of low budgets. I have no money, no surgical theater, no doctors, no anything. So anything that I can do, you guys can do. If I give you step-by-steps, there's no chance. I mean, you'll definitely be able to follow it. Okay, why? <laughs> Lots of people ask me this all the time. Basically, it's just curiosity. It's curiosity that's probably gonna kill me one day because I've sent myself to hospital a couple times. As there's not many other people working on this, so if I don't do it, chances are it won't actually get done. Well, up until now, of course. I'm hoping that this will inspire some of you guys to do things. Uh, they call it grinding rather than actual transhumanist technology because most transhumanist technology is kind of reserved to laboratories for very, very rich people. And if anyone sees me online, they'll know that this pisses me off a lot. I hate things that only people with money can afford, so my goal is to get actual... <laughs> Oh, Christ. <laughs> it's just normal. <laughs> All I want to do is get something interesting that extends your sensory perception that you guys can do. Something that actual normal people on a normal person's budget can follow along with. Tell me if you can still hear me, because this thing's fucking up. <laughs> I said, anyone can do this. This is, this is just kitchen stuff. I, I used to sterilize things with Rachmaninoff vodka. 
You know, you can all do this. I have some basic knowledge and some kind of semi-intuitive principles to pass on to you guys, but in the main, this is just really a reminder that this exists. It's kind of common knowledge, or at least I hope it's common knowledge. It can be applied to anything you want. I mean, anything can be used to stimulate nerves, provided that it's subdermal and it gives off the correct current. Uh, you, you can't really go wrong. You need any kind of idea. Any device you want to hook up to this can be hooked up. Uh, you want a compass? Fine. Uh, you want a temperature sensor? Fine. Anything you like. Fundamentally, devices stimulate nerves. All they need to do to do that is to give off a current. Anything that gives off a current and is safe inside your body can be used as a subdermal device, uh, given some pain. <laughs> Okay, a lot of pain. <laughs> Health warnings, I have to give you these, unfortunately, and take up five minutes of your time. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not shit. I'm just left. I sit in my kitchen, I cut myself up. There's a lot of pain in this and a lot of risk. In fact, putting certain things in your fingertips hurts so much that you can't fucking see. So if you, go, if you do get involved in this, uh, please, please make sure you know what you're doing and you're ready for pain because there's a lot. A, a lot. Anesthesia is not legal in a lot of countries, so please find out what's legal and what's not before you do things. Don't sue me. <laughs> you still need a bit of money. Uh, I would tell you guys a bit about this. Self-surgery is the complete last resort. I tried about two weeks of things. I tried every single doctor in my country before I found out that it's illegal. Uh, you have to ask every expert you can get to first. There's a guy called Amal Grafstra in the US who has RFID things done. Boring, I know, but... He had a doctor do it, so some doctors will allow you. Some doctors are bribable, mine are not. British GPs, as it says, have a crow up their butts and won't let you do anything. So don't even bother trying them and find out what's going on. Read up on infection prevention before you do anything. Uh, you'll need proper tools. You can ask me for where to get yours and what to use, depending on what you're doing. Anesthesia, wound care, that kind of thing. This is all stuff that you'll need to do research on if you're actually going to follow me, which uh, maybe you should. Okay, so this is my main principle, nerve stimulation. Anything can stimulate nerves, as I said. This has been known to medical science for a very long time. As long as you pass current through a nerve, you can set off the nerve. Uh, depending on the strength of the current, this will make the nerve either move muscles. Uh, the sensors that I have just set off small uh, nerve endings, so you get like a sort of tingling sensation. That's mostly what you're looking at. It's a very, very small current. I'm not sure how small, but it's enough not to be noticeable anywhere else. Generally, the only place you can do this is the fingertips because a place has to be quite nerve-rich before this will work. I did try everywhere else. It doesn't work in the back of your hands. It doesn't work on the palms of your hands. It doesn't work on your arms. It, you're going to have to put this in the most painful place, basically. So uh, if you, you, can, you can set off less dense nerves with much higher current, but I'm still experimenting with this. I don't suggest you do. <laughs> leave, it, leave it to me to fuck myself up with this. Natural sensors work the exact same way. This is nothing new. This has been done in the human body for thousands of years because your nerves are electronic. I said, I feel still sensors can do this too. Uh, I have a bunch of magnetic implants which do precisely that, which are how, more or less how the principle came across, although don't think that I invented this because I didn't. Those are invented by Steve Hayworth. I'll be talking more about those later. Uh, anything that's attached to an electrode can be output, so anything can be made into a sensory device. I think I've probably said that like five times now, but I, I wanted to get it across. Though anything you can fit under your skin and hook, up, and hook up to an electrode can work as an implant, given your propensity for pain. Caveats, I have to warn you, uh, you'll need electronics knowledge. I don't have that, so I have a lot of people online who help me out and friends who know it. So it's useful to have some background of yourself. You're all hackers, you probably have more than I do. Bioproofing is a whole world of nasty, rusty, scummy fun. Uh, please make sure that you bioproof things. There's something that you can call, buy called Sugru. That, uh, you get it online. It's uh, moldable silicone rubber. Really useful stuff. Hot glue works too. And as I said, please do your legal research. <coughs> Miniaturization too. Uh, I've had a lot of problems with that because a lot of things come on PCBs that won't actually fit. PCBs themselves are not good for going under your skin. <laughs> Trust me. As it said, if you place it too tightly, sometimes you'll knock into a corner or something and everything will come out and then you have to start again. So be careful of breakage, be careful of society because that's pretty much what they do. They just look at you and they're like, what the fuck did you do that for? Ew, ew, ew. And they all freak out. And it's just stay away from normal people. They're stupid. <laughs> Thank you.
Just as a quick aside, if anyone doesn't actually want to cut yourselves open for some reason, then you can always look into Haptics. My friends at the Sensebridge Collective have a website all about this stuff. Haptics is basically no pain, no risk, boring, and it's to do with uh, external skin stimulation instead of internal. So it's not a permanent adaptation. It's things that you wear, like a wearable hat to come, that kind of thing. They're much smarter than I am, so their devices are actually, you know, production. You can buy a kit. It's, I'm, I'm not advertising. It's just easier than this. Past projects I came to talk to you guys about, I don't know how much time I've got. Excellent. Uh, I've got less time than I thought I had, so... <laughs> Uh, these are the ones that I've actually done. I've messed around with RFID tags, I've messed around with temperature sensing, I've played a lot with these neodymium implants, and uh, one of my... Hmm? I'll explain later. And No, questions here if you want. But the South Pole is my big project, which I'll be explaining in a second, because that's the only thing that's actually cool. As I said, they're really simple experiments, it's just that the results are quite interesting. You can apply this to a lot of things that some people don't seem to think about. Okay, fun with RFID is what I've been doing for oof, years and years. This was maybe three years ago. RFID, RF, Radio Frequency Identification Protocol, you all know this. It's just simplistic stuff for tagging things. Obviously, you can tag people. If you just get a simple reader, you can put an ampoule, which is a tiny glass tag for all kinds of things. You can put it inside you because it's bioproof, and you can track yourself. And I had a keyboard running that wouldn't let anyone log on to Windows or Linux unless it was actually me present there. But as you all know, I know what you're thinking. It's so easy to break. Yeah, it is. It's boring. You don't really need to implant yourself with this stuff at all. I mean, I, said, I just did it for kicks. It's just an interesting little toy to play with. Uh, if the surgical procedure is just... Well, it's just a scalpel, really. I mean, anything can be put under your skin. All you need to do is get deep enough to open up a little hole, and you can put things in. I mean, it's really simple. <laughs> if, anyone <wants> to <laughs> if anyone wants to know precisely how I did this, all of these presence or absence hacks with RFID are all in Amal Grafstra's book. It's called RFID Toys, but that has step-by-steps. It's all online by now because it's well old about how I did pretty much everything with some variations, obviously, because mine is subdermal. RFID is crap for security. It's just don't even bother thinking about using it as your main security thing. It's an extra cute little, hey, look what I can do thing, but it's really not uh, good. I mean, it's, it's so easy to clone, and you can, you can use it as sort of an extra layer on top of your existing security system, but don't think about using it for securing your house or something. It's just the most easy thing to play with. If you want to figure out some little things about just the principles of experimentation with surgery, then RFID is a thing for you. Or you could ask me. <laughs> Overall outcomes, um, I didn't really get much out of this, other than some simplistic kicks. But mostly uh, I got a whole bunch of ebly bleebly about the mark of the beast, and uh, apparently I'm a disciple of Satan, and uh, all kinds of things. There's a whole tag community for people doing interesting things with the chips, but it's not really my thing. Like I said, there's a book out there that has all the information. RFID is really well documented. This is probably the only thing I do that actually has external documentation. Go on. <laughs> ah, yes, the Themista device. Uh, at one point, I, I, I'm on a lot of medications, as you can probably tell. Like, a lot of medications. So one of the side effects is occasionally my sense of temperature just blips in and out of existence. Uh, at some point, I got bored and decided to build a Themista-based input device to read this for me. Because, hell, who wouldn't? <laughs> it was to have a, it's really simple. You just hook thermistors up to resistors, up to a battery with an induction coil, and you hook that up to some LEDs or whatever, or some servos or electrodes as output. Really simple, just a little circuit. But um, I, I didn't have enough electronics knowledge to do that, as we'll explain later. It would have worked, but it didn't. <laughs> The basic idea was just, like I said, lithium cell attached to thermistors, attached to LEDs. Level of brightness or level of haptic stimulation would determine the level of heat. Could have been a haptic device, could have been a visual device, could have been whatever you wanted. Mostly from this I learned how to waterproof things, which I'll explain to you guys later, because it was knowledge hard earned. <laughs> uh, the waterproofing, before I discovered this Subaru stuff, was almost impossible to figure out. I, I couldn't find anything that would stay what's the word, intact inside the human body. I, I couldn't find anything that wouldn't be degraded by your natural enzymes or whatever. 
I mean, especially something through which small devices like the thermistors would actually work, 